My question is: the past history tells us that the billionaires of the past were actually either traders or the uh, you can say the millionaires, the billionaires who bought a big land and constructed big factories and installed machines and everything, and then they get the status of billionaire. Is it possible today, contrary to that that one, that a man with a PC, a man or woman with a PC in a chair on a table in a room, with AI skills and his passion or ideas, can become a billionaire? So, no, is this a, is, the, the person is who's it, asking this question? Like, is he a native English speaker? Should I answer this question in English or? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In English. It's in English. English. Okay. Right. Uh, yeah. okay. and, and second part is second part is may, maybe many people won't like it if it is if ai is that powerful are we charging very low for that humongous roi potentially skill with job guarantee as el nafi <laughs> so let me answer the first question right the first question is that that was asked that you know as the i mean if you look at the history and you know as Muslims, we have to, uh, I don't know if this person is a Muslim or a you know, non-Muslim, but as Muslims, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, there's a, there's a whole ayah in Quran, read the stories of the prophets, right? And the whole Qasas al-Anbiya, which is basically uh, a book about the stories of the prophets is for us to understand and take wisdom from those stories. What this means is essentially we need to go and read the history. Uh, in Islamic perspective, I will tell everyone to read At-Tabari. At-Tabari is an Islamic history, historical books, with multiple volumes, mm -hmm. right? Uh, 10, 12 volumes, something like that, depending on if you're do, do, doing in Urdu or English or Arabic or whatever, right? Uh, uh, history repeats itself. But there is a certain, because history has a pattern to repeat, right? So there was a time when people were doing, uh, basically buying pieces of land, like in the, in the US. I'm not going to go way back. I'm just going to go like 50, uh, 60 years back. So there was a time people were doing ranching in the North America. They were ranchers. Similarly, uh, people were becoming billionaires by tycoons by getting date, you know, like uh, pieces of land because that was their assets, right? Long story short, now the most important commodity in the world is now data, right? Whoever holds data, data is the next black oil or the black gold as they call it, right? Uh, I've been talking about this for quite some time in many seminars and whatnot. So if anyone wants to become a millionaire today, they need to really realize how to harness the power of data, right? Uh, and things are changing really, 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 really fast. And uh, a time is coming when people with mediocre skills, with normal skills, you know, will be able to maintain their jobs who know how to uh, harness AI as compared to hiring specialists. You know, specialists, they will be taken out. So if someone wants to become a millionaire or a billionaire or whatever they want to do, they need to see, you know, what people are consuming. Now, everyone is on digital space. Uh, before even like the virtual space came out, Meta and all of these things, when they were coming out with all of those things, I told them like, this is not going to fly because people, uh, there are not enough rare earth metals to create the VR sets and all of those things, right? And they're very expensive, even today. Even Apple came up with Apple Vision and this and that and whatnot, right? So all of these things are still expensive. However, this day and age, the next 20, 30 years, whoever knows how to utilize, how to learn, whoever has mastered AI, there are a couple of disciplines, DevOps, SOPS, AI, some of these disciplines. If they can harness these disciplines, which are taught in AI ops, that is enough for them to go into any discipline. They can go into blockchain by infusing blockchain with it. They can go into offensive security by going offensive security over it. They can develop their own solutions, start their own companies, data companies, you know, big data companies, whatever they want to do, because they can create solutions. So this day and age is now is all about data. Whoever controls data will be able to control everything. Now, as I said last time, in this day and age, physical borders are being erected everywhere. Logical borders, you know, digital borders, there are no digital borders. So you can do, you can call someone by just picking up the phone, like just like the, over here. I'm sitting in Canada, right, in Toronto. And some of you guys are in US, some of you guys are in UK, some of you guys are in Pakistan, some of you guys are in India. You're all over the place. 
in different continents, different countries. But you can see me, you can talk to me, but you can't come here. That's digital border. That's physical border. So physical borders are getting tougher and tougher. Digital borders are disappearing. So you can, you know, so the global, whole global landscape is your business arena. You can do business while working from, you know, Pakistan or India or Bangladesh, wherever you are. You can do business from U.S. and sell your services in Mexico, wherever you are, right? You don't have to go there anymore. You know, you can, these can be digital services. These can be digital products, physical products, whatever you want to do. You can do that. There's a company in, in a, which is coming as a competitor to Amazon. The company name is Timu, right? Timu is a company, T-E-M-E. It's a Chinese company. They sell everything from China. They have an app. You can go on the app. You can buy anything that you can think of available in the world, and you can buy it. So I tested it out. It took them three weeks to ship the product. In three weeks' time, as compared to Amazon, Amazon takes only you know, 24 hours. Some of the solutions are next day delivery. But that Chinese company rates uh, versus Amazon rates, there's a difference of more than 75%. In pricing, so if Amazon is selling selling us stuff for hundred dollars, Timu will be selling the same thing for twenty five thirty dollars. So you know, if anyone wants to become a billionaire, they have a lot of opportunities, but they need to know they need to harness these powers. And the only way they can do it is if they can harness AI. AI is penetrating everywhere. You know, my CTO, Dr. Yasser, sent me a clip from Sam Altman, who is the guy, the founder of the OpenAI. In his podcast, he said, in five years' time, we don't need any programmers. The demand for programmers will go down because AI will be writing code. AI is already writing code. We are teaching that right now. You know, So you need to harness AI because AI will become a reality that you cannot deny. It will be part of your lives, whether you like it or not. If you want to live in a jungle or a forest, that's just a different separate story. If you want to go into up in the Arctic or in tundra in, in Canada or go up north, you can do that. Go south, you can't even live in south because it's very cold in Antarctica. Only penguins live there and some leopard seals and whatnot. So it all depends where you are. But the world will get more digitally connected and it will be much more difficult from a physical perspective, right? However, this day and age, for the next 30 years, organizations will keep on looking and businesses will keep on looking how we can expand ourselves by utilizing AI. This is the, so every, you know, every age we go through some kind of industrial revolution. There was a steam engine time. There was a time when steam engines were there. Then, you know, industrial revolution started. You know, I don't have to give a history lesson over here. Now, the revolution is all about AI. AI is going to enter. It's already there. It's already being utilized. It's already part of our lives, right? And for the next 30 years, they will try to embed it and basically solidify it throughout all processes within a country or globally, wherever they are, right? It's going, it, is, it is being utilized in wars. That's the same thing that they were doing in Palestine. They were bombing everything that was moving. The AI was selecting the targets. Normally, it takes a week to two weeks to select a target for a military as they have to go through a protocol. But, you know, Israel was just said, like, we're just going to draw, bomb everywhere. So you can imagine AI is being used everywhere. It is, it is a force for good. At the same time, it is a force of evil as well. Every, just like everything. This pen can be a force of good. The same pen can be a force of evil. So it all depends on how you use it. Right, so that's one thing you have to understand. Now, they, there's another part to it. Since organizations are still thinking, they're still thinking how we can use this, how in what sectors and whatnot. There are, you know, and I'm going to give you a number. Go and check it on Google, where whatever engines you want to use. There are only sixty thousand companies, roughly sixty thousand companies, which are publicly listed companies. But out of three hundred and fifty million companies. So the, so the 60,000 is a very little number. So imagine 350 million companies are private companies. These are innovators. They're coming up with new solutions and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So there is a complete green field in terms of implementing AI in whatever walks of life you want to do it. The, you, know, the, uh, you know, the landscape is open. 
it's a complete green field. You can reap whatever you sow. Just go and do it. Now, someone asked me, you know, the second part is like, are we charging very less for that? We can charge more if you want. But we started this platform for one important reason. We started this platform as a global platform available for everyone. We are not here to only target the upper echelons of the society. No, we are here to make a difference by teaching everyone, wherever they are in the world, where education is not accessible. You know, like Lump's degree, you know, this person came and he spent almost 2 million rupees, you know, in terms of doing a Lump's degree, one year master's. That is the cost of uh, roughly at the cost of one year of bachelor's. So if you do a four years bachelor's, two to four years, you end up paying 8 million to 10 million rupees, which is like in dollars, it's a, it's a huge amount. You know, these universities are teaching you an education system which, is, which has no worth globally. I've talked about this many times. I've showed Harvard and different uh, business schools articles on it as well. And even Harvard realizes, Oxford, Cambridge, they all realize this, the education system is failing us because it takes a longer time. People are not ready and they're still jobless. You know, this person, he spent millions of, uh, you know, rupees in terms of finding a job. And it took him, you know, 18 months to find a job. And even on that job, it still, yeah, I'm I'm 100% sure he's still going through the ROI, the return investment is still not there because he still has to go through everything that he spent on and has to return the money to their parents. He can't do that. He is now married, 130,000 is nothing. It's you know it's like uh, five hundred six hundred dollars something like that, right? So you can imagine. So education. The reason we opened this platform to be accessible is for everyone, so that people can come, they can study, and they can be successful. And we are we are not targeting this platform for the uber rich. We are targeting this platform for people who really need it. That's that's the reason that we started this whole project.